Hey hey, Marcus House with you here. Today I'm doing a full Iridium 7 SpaceX launch simulation and super excited of course to see the Block 5 back out. There's two uh, launches that are almost back to back here. I'm uh, focusing here on the Iridium 7 one because it's just a little more interesting to me. The original launch time for this is 4.39 in the morning now just so that uh, i could get some much nicer footage i've just pushed my launch time just forward by about an hour so still launching just prior to sunrise but we're going to get some nice shots there of the falcon 9 as it hits the full sunlight as it ascends so very exciting stuff we are of course landing it down on the drone ship and just read the instructions and we are heading for a low Earth polar orbit at exactly, or as close as I can get, uh, 625 kilometers, uh, fully circularized at around 86 to 90 degrees. Now I'm going to try to get as close to 90 because I just like to have a perfectly vertical orbit around the Earth. Now I've even gone so far as to launch on the exact same date, which is uh, currently, as I record this, scheduled for the 25th of July, which is assuming that we don't have any delays or anything like that. So you will definitely see here that it is certainly summer in the Northern Hemisphere and winter in the Southern Hemisphere where I am right now just coming up here to main engine cutoff and we're going to see some beautiful scenes here of the stage two decoupling there from the first stage really beautiful shots there that you can do with kerbal space program and the hull camera mod which is a great little mod to get shots like this and obviously this is the perspective from inside the first stage looking out at the second stage firing up there of course, the first stage is using its RCS thrusters to turn uh, in a retrograde direction so it can do a slight correction burn to make sure we're going to come down just nicely on that drone ship. From the Stage 2's perspective, we can actually see the Stage 1 just drop behind there as we release those fairings, which are going to drop nice and majestically out the side there. We can see both of them falling away. From a different perspective, we can see the clamshell fairings opening up there, exposing those 10 Iridium satellites. But our boost back burn here with our first stage is just about to begin. This is essentially a tiny little correction just to ensure that our trajectory is going to bring us right down on top of that drone ship. After this burn is complete, there's just going to be a coast period for the first stage until we do our entry burn just prior to entering the thicker parts of the atmosphere actually able to pull up the stage two footage up in the top corner as we watch both these scenes together we can just see how beautiful the stage one and two both look there in the morning daylight now it has been quite some time since we've seen a falcon 9 booster land on a drone ship or anywhere because they have been expending most of the block 4 boosters lately this is of course a block 5 it's the 59th launch of a falcon 9 the 39th of a version 1.2 and only the third launch launch of a Block 5. We were launching today from the Vandenberg Air Force Base in California and launching due south so that we can get that beautiful polar orbit. In fact, you probably noticed that the booster was heading in a slightly westerly direction just to cancel out our orbital speed gained by the Earth's rotation. Switching back here to the view of our Iridium satellites, you can see there we have five Iridium satellites on the top segment of the vessel and five on the bottom, so we have ten in total. We're launching today the Iridium Next Block 154 to 167. The payload mass of each one of these satellites is around 860 kilograms, so obviously we multiply that by ten and we have another thousand kilograms or so for the actual dispenser itself. So around 9,600 kilograms is the total payload. Now this isn't a huge amount for the Falcon 9 to get to orbit, but in a polar orbit, we do need to cancel out the rotation of the Earth at the same time. So we do lose quite a bit of delta V there. Obviously we are now doing our entry burn, the grid fins are out, and we will now watch the beautiful Falcon 9 come down onto that drone ship. Just read the instructions today. Screaming into the atmosphere at over 1300 meters per second, we have the titanium grid fins to take a lot of our velocity off as we plummet down through the atmosphere. We're going to be switching to a three engine burn quickly just to wipe off that last bit of velocity and then finally touching down just with one engine. So firing up the engines there, cutting back to one engine and slowly coming down here, just touching down before the vessel starts taking off vertically again. So only just made that in time there, beautiful landing. And of course, sunrise is only a few minutes away. As we zoom out, we can just see some of the light scattering over the water there. 
Zooming back in, you can see just how little fuel I had left as well. If I just check out the fuel levels, there's only a few thousand units remaining, which is less than 1% of, uh, of a full tank, so uh, hardly any margin there. Our stage two, of course, is still on the way to orbit, just a little over a minute now in burn time remaining until we get into a stable orbit. We are heading again for an apoapsis around 600 and 20 kilometers. There is then going to be a second burn on the opposite side of the orbit just to circularize, and that will be the time that we launch our 10 Iridium satellites. Now, this is SpaceX's 14th mission in 2018, the third mission here for Iridium this year, and uh, the seventh overall, leaving only one more mission for Iridium to launch the last 10 satellites. The Iridium 8 mission should be coming up somewhere around October if everything goes to plan. The Iridium Next network is quite amazing really when you really look at the details of it. It's a global network, all satellites can have line of sight communication with each other. There's 81 of them in total, so a very, very complex network that is uh, obviously undergoing constant adjustment. We have our second stage engine cut off there at an apoapsis height just above the target there, 634 I got here. Uh, the target apoapsis of course, 625 as I said earlier in the video. So we need to now wait and you will see this in the SpaceX footage coming up here soon as well because we need to do a secondary burn to circularize at the opposite side of our orbit. So we basically need to orbit down over Antarctica, right back up over Madagascar basically before we can do that next circularization burn. It actually takes around 45 minutes for our vessel to orbit all the way around the other side of the globe here. You can see just as we're approaching our apoapsis, we just need to turn prograde in a prograde direction and do a very, very small burn just to raise that periapsis height from 183 up above our 634. We'll see how close I can get it. I am doing this manually. When the second stage is so empty, it's actually extremely powerful. And I'm going to throttle this up just to minimum thrust, just as we count down. About here's about right, so we'll switch that engine on. Minimum thrust, just for a few seconds, and there we go. Oh, I just overshot it just a little. So we're just a little higher now than the target altitude there for the real mission. So the real mission was targeted again at around 625 kilometers from the surface circularized. So we're very close to that. Of course, when we release the satellites, they're all going to be doing small little tiny corrections with their tiny little engines. So uh, there's plenty of Delta V in each one of these satellites to just make these tiny corrections. We're just going to start launching these off now. I'm going to do it a little faster than the real mission. There's quite a delay between each of the deployments of the satellites. And that's just so, I guess, they don't run into each other. So <laughs> I'm just going to do it a little quicker. Uh, so just slowly launching all 10 of these off and you can just see this beautiful shot there of all 10 of our satellites slowly deploying away, separating from each other. It'd be lovely if we could get some shots like this in real life. Of course, we would need a camera out here orbiting with it. The only camera we have available are the ones on the stage too. So all of the satellites are deployed there now and each of these will slowly make their way into their correct orbits. Now, you'd sort of think, well, if we're going to actually have all of these so close together, how do they spread themselves out around the world? And I'm gonna show you uh, just how quickly they will spread out with just slight differences in velocity uh, a little later on. But first, what we need to do is deorbit our stage two. Now you can see how little fuel we have here in the top right here, and just a tiny burn will wipe off so much velocity so quickly because there is almost no mass to this vessel now. So just a tiny amount of fuel will easily deorbit this vessel. Normally the stage two would deorbit itself in the ocean, but today I just thought that we would bring it down over land just so we get a little extra explosion. So just coming in over the poles here, the vessel just exploding there as we rip into the atmosphere. The only thing that's really going to survive in this case is our engine, which can take quite a lot of punishment. And actually it will turn itself in a retrograde direction there and plummet down through the atmosphere. In a previous video, I talked about methods of perhaps re-entering stage two and trying to recover it. So if you wanna check out that video, I've got a link up in the top right here. A uh, really interesting way that we could do this with some form of inflatable heat shield or something like that. There are quite a number of proposals out there. They are, of course, doing some really exciting stuff trying to catch those fairings with Mr. Steven, which is SpaceX's recovery vessel, and it's had a massive net upgrade. 
So as we wave goodbye to our single little Merlin VAC engine there, we'll switch back to our satellites here and I'll just show you just how quickly we can spread these satellites out over a very short period of time. You can see they're all still quite close together. We'll deploy the solar panels there, turn those around and what we can now do is switch on our little engine. We've just got one single engine at the back, very very low thruster weight but we don't need much at all. In fact it's great for it to be a low thrust to weight ratio engine because we need these burns to be extremely accurate and the higher the thrust to weight the less accurate we're likely to be. Now, although the SpaceX part of the mission had the insertion orbit for these satellites at around 625 kilometers in altitude, the Iridium satellite constellation's target altitude is around 780 kilometers, just a little over that. So all of these need to raise their apoapsis and periapsis and circularize at that altitude. Now, because we start off a little lower, each of these can spread out quite considerably in a short period of time. You can see just how quickly we're moving away from those other satellites now. And uh, yes, we're just going to do another quick correction because I didn't quite get it right the first time. Just raising this up just a little more. Again, right up to around 781 is the target that I'm reading here. Again, we need to circularize this orbit, so doing another prograde burn at our apoapsis here just to raise the periapsis until we're circularized. The Iridium Next satellites are, of course, filled with a hypergolic fuel hydrazine, and this allows them to do as many relights as they really need because hydrazine, being a hypergolic fuel, only needs a catalyst to actually self ignite. So just finalizing that circularization burn there, and we have got that almost spot on, so that's great. Now I'm just going to time warp a few days worth of time, and you can see this beautiful shot here of the Earth rotating under us in this wonderful polar orbit. Now because the vessel we are controlling here is in a higher orbit, that means that the other collection of nine satellites are actually orbiting underneath us faster, and after just a few days you can see we are already on the opposite side of the world, so that is just how fast they can separate from each other. So I hope you enjoyed that video. If you haven't seen my content before, please do subscribe to see more. If you'd like to chat, we also have a Discord up and running. You can come and join the crew. There's a link in the description. In the tile in the bottom left today, we have my Saturn V mission to the moon from the other week. In the top right, my latest video. In the bottom right, a video that YouTube has selected just for you. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you all in the next video.